everybody, welcome back to another fun and exciting Algebra 1 class. Today we are going to be starting off in chapter number 5, lesson 2, and that is on page 159, 159 in your books. And we are going to be talking about, um, just more about e uh, systems of equations, and that's what this whole chapter is about, systems of equations. And in this lesson we're going to learn how to solve these using what's called substitution. Last lesson we learned how to solve these using graphing and so now this one is just another method, just another way to really do the same thing. And I think what you'll find is graphing is going to be sometimes the easier way to do it, substitution will be sometimes a little bit easier, and then um, in the next lesson we're going to learn another way called elimination and sometimes that'll be an easier way to do it. So we're just going to keep learning different things but in essence, we're doing the same thing. We're just learning different ways to accomplish the same thing. And what we're doing is finding the crossing point of those lines, remember, okay? So we're putting systems where two lines are crossing, and then we have to find the point that they cross. If you look down here at the screen, I've got some steps for solving systems of equations. The steps in your book are on page 159 as well. They're a little bit more complicated, I think, in the book. I've tried to simplify them just a little bit for you here. Uh, but number one, the first thing that we want to do is we want to solve one equation for either variable. This is important. You can pick which variable you're solving for. So if you want to solve for the y, fine. If you want to solve for the x, fine doesn't matter. So what we'll do is we'll come down here and we're going to work a problem as we're going through the steps. So the first thing is solving for one of the variables. So we just want to take one of the equations. Let's start with this equation. Why? I don't know. I just picked it. I just felt like using that one. And so we'll use the 5x plus y equals 13. Now we just want to pick one of these letters. Now I'm going to I'm going to tell you which one I would like to choose because it's going to be a really easy solution. I want to pick the Y. And I'll tell you why I want to do that. The reason I would pick the Y is because I can very easily move this 5x to the other side and get Y equals 13 minus 5x. Okay? And I'm done. That's a one-step solution right there. You say, wait a second, how are you done? You don't have y equals 5 or, uh, you know, y equals 6. Or, well, this is a literal equation. Look, we have two letters. We can't solve it if it has two letters. So all I can do basically is get y by itself. All right, so we're, what we're left with here is y equals 13 minus 5x. And that's as simple as we can get it because we can't really solve for anything else. Now, here's kind of where the trick comes in. Here's where the magic comes in right here. Watch this. Step number two is substitute the solution into the other equation. And I, I could probably put on here um, for that variable, but that makes sense. All right, you'll see what I mean in just a second. What are we going to substitute? We're going to substitute into this equation right here. I'll change the color when we do this. But you're going to substitute it in for the y. In other words, you're taking out this y right here, and you're putting in this, 13 minus 5x. That goes in for y. So you solve the first equation for one of the variables. It doesn't matter which one. Step number two, this is where the substitution comes in. So you're putting it into the place of that other variable. So in this case, we are going to substitute in 13 minus 5x where the y is in that equation. So we'll have 2x minus 3, and we need to put a parenthesis there where we're substituting in 13 minus 5x equals 12. Okay, so we're going to solve this by first distributing that th negative 3 in so we're going to end up with 2x minus 3 times 13, which is 39, minus minus. So again, we're, we're, we're distributing. So minus times minus is going to give us positive 15x equals 12. Okay. Now we're just going to combine our like terms. And so we have a 2x and a 15x, and so that's going to give us a 17x. 
and then minus 39 equals 12. Uh, we're going to move the, neg the, the minus 39, we're going to move that to the other side by adding 39 to both sides. That's going to cancel, and we're going to get 17x equals, uh, what is that, um, 51? All right. And then we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 17. Cancel x equals, and if you divide 17 into 51, you're going to get 3. So x equals 3. Okay, so let's go back up and look at the next step. What would we do next? Well, step number three was solve the resulting equation. That's what we just did. Step number four, plug the answer into the original equation and solve. Okay, so we're going to plug this answer, x equals 3. We're going to plug it into the original equation. What was the original equation? That one right there, that 5x plus y equals 13. So in other words, what we want to do is we want to come down, I'll just do it over here on the side, we want to plug in to 5x plus y equals 13. We want to plug in our answer. What was our answer? x equals 3. So where x is, we're going to plug in a 3. 5 times 3 plus y equals 13. Then we just solve that. Um, 5 times 3 is 15 plus y equals 13 minus 15 minus 15. It's going to cancel out. That's going to give us y equals negative 2. And there you go. There is your solution. Our solution is x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. Now, how do we want to write our solution? Well, we want to write our solution in an ordered pair. So in a coordinate pair, so we're going to put in 3 comma negative 2. We're going to put that in parentheses, and that is going to be our solution. Now, are we done? Yes and no. Let's go back to the steps, and it says step number 5, check both solutions. How would I check both solutions? Well, the way that you would do that is come down to the other equation, the second equation, and we're going to plug in both things to that equation. So we're going to have 2x minus 3y, 2x minus 3y equals 12. And we're going to plug in, and we're going to see if that actually works. So here's our solution, 3 and negative 2. So we have 2, whoops, 2 times 3 minus 3 times negative 2 equals 12. So let's see if that's true. What is 2 times 3? That's 6. And then what is this? Negative 3 times negative 2. Uh, that gives us a positive 6 equals 12. And look, 6 plus 6 equals 12. 12 equals 12. And when it checks, that means that we have the correct solution. That means that this is indeed the place that those two lines would cross on our graph. Now, we could we have graphed that? Yes, we could have graphed that. We could have taken these two equations right here, and we could have put them on a graph paper. And what you would have found, and you can do this if you want, you can try it, put it on graph paper, graph those, and you're going to see that they cross at 3, negative 2. Okay? And... Um, yeah, if you'll just kind of follow those steps that I just gave you, uh, you're going to find that um, you're going to come up with the answer. Now, that is what's called a consistent system. That means that it's going to have an answer. Um, what happens if you end up with, like, parallel lines? Well, you may end up coming with the fact that it, it yields no answer. It's what's called contradictory. In other words, you get, uh, when you check it, you end up with negative 2 equals 0. Well, that's not true. And when you do that, and when it comes out wrong, you're going to know that there is no solution. In other words, it is a parallel line. So you have two lines that are running parallel to each other. They never touch. The other solution potential is that it's on top of the other line, and that would be every everything is an answer 
uh, for that. And, and you could potentially come up with that where the lines are what's called coincident lines. And when you get that, it would be something like 4 equals 4. Instead of x equals 4, you'd come up with 4 equals 4. And when you come up with something weird like that, that means that everything's an answer, and that's a coincident line, and that's on top of the other one. There's some examples in your book if you want to look through those. I'm not going to take the time to actually go through those uh, here on the video, but if you want to look on your in your book on page 160, 161, you'll see some uh, examples of those, um, both parallel lines and what, what they call coincident lines where they're on top of each other, okay? You need to practice some of those. There's some good practice problems in there on page 162. And so you can practice some of those. Keep uh, trying. Uh, follow those steps. Let's go back and look at those steps real quick. So you first want to solve for one of the, the variables. The next thing is you want to substitute it back in. The third thing is you want to solve the resulting equation. The fourth thing is plug in that answer. And then you're going to get your answers, both of your answers, you get an X and a Y from there. And then step number five, you would check your answers back in there. If you missed anything there, make sure you go back, rewind that video and take a look at it, do it again. But the big thing here is just practice. You just need to practice these. You keep doing it, you're gonna get good at it and it's gonna become um, second nature. It's gonna become very easy for you to solve these by substitution, but it does take time. Don't, don't give up, okay? Keep working hard. All right, we'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.